Studios have a secret life at night. Some things we know about and others we don't. I once had a mouse in the studio who had an appetite for my leather hard pots at midnight. Potters are very specific about how they button up their studios at the end of the day and how they tend to their pots. I don't think it's any coincidence that this skill set of tending to something has parallels to cooking and to gardening. Making is part of life, and anyone who loves working with their hands will want to use them in as many ways as possible to make and feed and grow things. Ramen holds a special place for me because when I was a kid, we only had it twice a year. Growing up in Maine in the 70s, there were no Japanese grocery stores, which meant that eating chu kasoba or ramen was tied to visits from my aunt from New York who would bring up pork belly from Chinatown. When I was designing this bowl, I was thinking about the angle of the walls. If it's too shallow, the noodles and everything on them will sink, and if it's too steep, it's hard to pick up the noodles with chopsticks. I started making ramen bowls on a hydraulic press this year as a practical decision because more and more Americans are eating one-dish meals. Plus, as I get older, I'm conscious of the limitations on my body, and so it makes sense for me to use a machine that saves me some labor. The prototype was dry-thrown and has the gestural swipe that I always put in my bowls. For almost 20 years, I wondered what would happen when that mark, the mark that's such a product of a specific moment, was reproduced a hundred times or a thousand times, and whether its sensibility would feel like a kind of cloning or whether it would be fine. As I start to use industrial and digital tools, the central question for me is how to retain the warmth of a handmade object and how the machine can contribute its own unique warmth. What's the difference between a flaw and a variation? How can I use both the intentional and the unintentional? Can I create a system of making in which the juxtaposition of ideas lies at the heart of it? With my first few batches of bowls, about 25% of them were warped. Was it the structure of the mold? Was the mold misaligned? Was it happening in the drying process? Was I firing too hot? We have this notion that an industrially made object ought to be perfect. And so the question for me as a maker becomes, what is my hierarchy of flaws? What if warping actually makes a handmade pot better? Or is it just a cop out for bad craftsmanship? How do I push back on industry standards that don't recognize human folly? The fact is, is that the run to the litter is often the most charming and the most loved. One solution has been to invent a yokai specific to pottery. The Japanese have an incredible pantheon of monsters, or yokai, that make very precise kinds of trouble. Menbachibozu, or noodle bowl boy, is a ramen bowl turned bad who comes to the pottery studio at night to warp, crack, and break pots. Sometimes for the worse, sometimes for the better. Menbachibozu, then, is only fired on warp bowls, not the dragon bowls, and the decals are placed in different positions every time. I love the idea of bringing superstition back into pottery culture, because in a world that's increasingly more transparent, I want more mystery. <laughs>